Good morning. Good to see all of you here this morning on this beautiful morning after all the rain of last week. I don't know how much you got, but we were celebrating our anniversary and, and at a, pl a particular restaurant in Crystal River where we had to sit on the porch, and the whole time we were there, it was downpour. But uh, we stayed dry for the most part. So, But uh, glad to have you here today. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you, and we're so pleased that you're sharing with us and that you're a part of our celebration here today. Uh, I might mention that this will be my last Sunday here. Next week will be a Dr. Bennett again, and then on, and I'm going to be in, in Indianapolis uh, next, leaving next Saturday, and be up there for the 11th and the 18th, where I'll be speaking at the Zionsville Presbyterian Church, if any of you are familiar with that area. And then on the 11th of July, Pastor Llewellyn Hartley will be here for her first Sunday. And so it's something to really look forward to. It's going to be one service that day, just at 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock on that day. And it's important to, uh, to know that. And, uh, and when we're talk while we're talking about her coming to be here as our pastor, a couple of things. Uh, one is that if you would like to host a meet and greet, and that would be for her as well as for her husband, Brett, and that would be, could be a coffee, could be a dinner, could be a luncheon, all kinds of possibilities, where you can uh, sign up out here. And what, what it would mean if you hosted it is that you'd probably invite a, a couple of other people, maybe a couple of their couples, or maybe four or five other people if you're a single person. And um, then, so it would be a fairly intimate gathering, and you can invite whoever you want. Now, when, it was not, when I was in San Antonio, I saw some of the same people at about 10 times in one of these things because they were really popular. But there was nothing wrong with that. I uh, really got to know them then. So I uh, hope you'll do that. Also, there are name tags out here. And if you were here on the Sunday that she preached, then you know that um, your name tag probably is out there. But if it's not out there, we'd love for you to have a name tag on. And the, the reason is that she really wants to get to know names. And I got to tell you, if you're a new pastor... There's not anything worse than, than not knowing people's names week after week after week. But if they have a name tag on, it's so nice to be able to give their name and how do you know them? Oh, I got the name tag on. So, you know, that, that kind of thing. So we really invite you to take a name tag too. Also, I'd like to announce in, in, a, in a, a sad way that Jerry Butler, who was an affiliate member of this church, died on June the 19th. He and his wife have moved back north and uh, his wife Lois, and if you would like to uh, send uh, some kind of a condolence letter or would like to call, please call the church office and they have that information, and, and some of you received it uh, on email anyway, probably. And then also, I'm sorry to announce that uh, Sarah Antruck, Antruck, uh died on June the 24th. Now, Sarah was in the choir, she was in Heart Song, our women's group, and she was also in the sewing group. So uh, the memorial service will be here at 11 o'clock on Wednesday. And uh, our prayers and our sympathy go to her husband, Greg, and daughters, Stephanie, Valerie, and Melanie. So please keep them in your prayers. Let us now worship God with a sense of passion and a sense of joy. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us pledge allegiance to a land that's free. May we all be grateful for a land so fair as we lift our voices in a solemn prayer, in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her 
and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America. Sweet home, God bless America, my home, my home, sweet home. Don't you love seeing that? It's so beautiful. Now please join me in our responsive call to worship. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your way straight. Now we'll sing together our opening hymn, O Worship the King. Understanding that we are feeble and frail, and especially when it comes to keeping God's uh, expectations for us, let us now join together in praying first our, our common prayer of confession, our unison prayer of confession, and that will be followed by a silent and personal time of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to change what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. 
The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. You may be seated. It's now our privilege to come to God in prayer. When we come to God in prayer, do you realize that we're coming to the great God who created everything? The great God who sustains us and nurtures us and keeps us day by day? The great God who's the giver of all good gifts? So please note, when you come to God in prayer, that is something very special and never to be taken for granted. As I pray and lead us in prayer, I would encourage you to pray silently. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are grateful for the privilege of gathering here today, especially after the pandemic and more and more things are are, uh, as they used to be. We come to you grateful for the joy of celebrating fellowship and being here and singing together and praying together, laughing together, crying together, enjoying one another's company. We know that's the way you created us. You created us to be in fellowship with you and with one another. And so thank you, God. And thank you for your marvelous creation around us. We know there are places in our world where there's starvation, and we know there are places in our world where there's drought and, and deprivation and all kinds of things going on. We know there are places in our world where, where uh, there is warfare and where there is injustice and where all kinds of bad things are happening too. And God, we pray that uh, you would meet the needs of those people. And we pray that the one who came as the Prince of Peace might somehow rule and reign in their lives. And we commit their situations to you and pray that you would give us eyes like you have to see the world as you see it. Help us when we are prejudiced and where, when we are uh, greedy to to understand how you call us to be uh, those who are reaching out to bring reconciliation and reaching out to be generous to those who have need. And God, as we gather here today, we come to you praying for our nation as we prepare next Sunday to celebrate our, our, the anniversary, the birthday of our, of our nation. We thank you for this nation. We thank you for the place uh, that it has uh, been in, in the world and, and the, the way that it has been generous and the way that you have used our nation to make such a difference in the world. And God, as we think of our nation today, as much as any time, at least in my memory, it seems like we really are polarized. We really are uh, taking uh, pot shots at each other and, 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 and some things that seem politically expedient are, are at the cost of others. And so, God, in a way that, that I certainly don't understand how it will happen, I pray that there might be uh, a coming of unity, that there might be a peacefulness, that there might be a tranquility, more compassionate, and there might be a greater gentility as we deal with one another. And again, uh, regardless of which side we're on, we, we believe that you created all of us, and you're not on either side. You're the God who cares for everyone, and you deeply, deeply desire peace. Help us to be instruments of your peace and kindness, to be reflections of your love and grace to the world in which we live. And we realize that it's not just those people in Washington or those people in in Tallahassee, but it starts with us right here where we are. Help us to be gracious as we reach out to other people. And God, I thank you for this church and the place that it has, uh, and the the part that it's played in our community. I pray that that might continue and might grow, and and we look with great anticipation to Llewellyn coming with us and becoming our pastor. 
and we pray that you would uh, bless her in a way that is beyond her dreams, in a way that's beyond of all of our dreams, not so that she'll receive glory or you'll receive, or that uh, we'll receive glory as an institution, as a church here, but so that you will receive the glory and you will be honored in new and fresh ways and people will be drawn naturally in a tantalizing way to you. And God, we pray for all of those in our congregation who are going through difficult seasons. Maybe there's some who are searching for a job and, and find it to be discouraging. Maybe there are some who have gone through uh, separations of different kinds. Maybe they've moved across the country and are now here. Maybe there are some that are in the process of moving back to where they used to be, and it means uprooting. It means change. In the midst of the transitions of our lives, we pray that you would help us to understand that you've promised to be with us wherever we go, whatever we do. And God, I also pray, as we gather here today, that you would be with those people who are going through uh, difficult times physically, emotionally, spiritually. I pray for your healing touch. I pray for the doctors and the nurses, the medical community, the first responders, all who work with them, that you would give them compassion and give them wisdom. And God, we would pray for those uh, who are going through the valley of the shadow of death, either uh, their own impending death or those who, um, who have experienced the death of a friend or a loved one. And I pray that you would give them a deep, deep sense of your peace and comfort and give them a sense of hope, even in the midst of uh, uh, the life at this, at this juncture in our earth being over. Uh, help us to know that there's always life after life with you when we believe in you. And now, God, as we continue to worship you, I pray that you would open our eyes and our ears and help us to see you in new and fresh ways. And I pray that you would help us uh, to be encouraged and to feel emboldened to make a difference in the community where we live, in the world where we live, even in the week to come. I pray all of these things now in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, the one who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy is the Lord. Holy Thank you. It just occurred to me that I forgot to welcome those people who may be watching online today and, and hope that you feel very much a part of our worship service and feel very much a part of this celebration. Certainly from the cradle to the grave, life is filled with transitions, one, transfi one transition after another, from the very first breath and then that burning cry to the very last gasp, and then silence. Transitions bring change, and <laughs> I don't know about you, but change doesn't come easy, does it? And sometimes uh, change uh, is, is welcomed, it's refreshing, fresh breeze. Other times change is difficult and we are vehemently against it. Sometimes change is expected, and sometimes it's very much unexpected. A common timeline is we're born, maybe that first step is very significant, then kindergarten, elementary school, high school, sometimes then there's college and, and first job, and then there's uh, marriage in some cases, and then, then grandchildren, and, and it goes on and on until retirement, and then many times we face our own death. Again, sometimes it's quick, and other times it takes a long time. As I thought about that this week, I thought about the birth of our daughter, Becky. This was in Belleville, Illinois, and it was in the heart of Cardinal territory. Uh, you know, Cardinal territory, baseball Cardinals. And so, um, uh, Becky was born in less than 45 minutes, and it would have been sooner than that if they hadn't slowed it down so that the doctor could get there. So, thinking that I would compliment Alice and, and, and help her to feel just so joyful about what she had just gone through. Of course, I hadn't, but I was alongside of her, but as much as I could be. But so I said to her, understanding again uh, that I'm, that I'm a, a person who uh, loves the St. Louis Cardinals, I said, um, Alice, you have a faster delivery than Bob Gibson, who was a Hall of Fame pitcher, and he, one pitch after another. I, I thought it was a, a sweet thing to say. Alice was very nonplussed by that. I, I still haven't quite figured it out, but she's smiling at least and shaking her head at the same time. So uh, I guess that says something. Music also plays a part in uh, transitions. Uh, think about it. Lullabies at the beginning, school fight songs, pomp and circumstance, wedding march, the haunting tunes of a bagpiper, maybe playing Amazing Grace. For me, tr music has played an important part of transitions, and I think from college days on, I, I saw the movie um, Brian's Song, and Brian's Song was, uh, uh, you know, Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers, and Brian Piccolo dies, and it's a very haunting, the, the tune is very haunting. And then, then another uh, song that I, or a hymn that I remember hearing a great chorale sing it at a time when I was kind of in transition was Children of the Heavenly Father, a Swedish hymn. And so whenever I've gone through transition without even thinking about it, sometimes it's subconsciously, I'm thinking I'm either whistling or humming Brian's song or, or uh, humming or whistling uh, Children of the Heavenly Father. And I'll tell you, if it's unexpected, Alice gets a little bit nervous uh, when, uh, when she hears either of those coming from me. But sometimes scripture is another important part of uh, transitions uh, in, in our lives. And a scripture that I've gone to, and I've preached on this many times, is Joshua chapter 1. Joshua is in a major time of transition. Um, Joshua seems to wonder whether he's going to be able to handle it. And boy, could I relate to that. Each time I've gone through a major transition, it, 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 I've always thought, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. You know, each time in, in education as well as, as going to a new church or a new setting. And uh, so Joshua has been a major part of my life during transitions. Well, 
it was interesting, the last church where I served as a, an installed pastor, the, the pastor nominating committee, like the one that we had here, um, said, you know, before we start, let's look for a person in Scripture who's going to personify what we're looking for in a pastor. Maybe that'll help us kind of clarify what we're looking for. So they chose Joshua. So you can imagine <laughs> when I heard that and, and realized that God was working, uh, it, was, it was certainly an affirmation. Well, I want to read to you the passage of Scripture that I mentioned, Joshua chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 9. Joshua 1, 1 through 9. And we'll be talking about this situation and help, maybe it'll help it come alive. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do everything written in it. This will be, then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, third time here, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be God at his blessing, understanding, and most importantly, his application upon this, the reading of God's holy and inspired word. Please join me in prayer. God, I pray that you would speak to each one of us now. Your word has stood the test of time, and that's the way you speak to people often in these days. And so, God, I pray that through the, your spirit, your spirit might be the go-between, taking these words and applying them to each of our lives. Speak to the people and the preacher alike. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. First, let's look at Joshua's transitional situation. Now, Joshua, as a young man, was Moses' right-hand man. When the, when the exodus took place, the deliverance uh, of, uh, of the, the Israelites out of uh, Egypt, he was the second in command. And uh, he was one of the 12 spies. Not long after that, Josh, uh, uh, Moses said, we're going to send 12 spies into the promised land so that we kind of know the lay of the land before we think about entering it. And so 12 were sent, and you know how he and Caleb gave a minority report. The majority report of the, first, of the 10 said, you know, it's impossible. This is a difficult place. It's foreboding. We can't, we can't possibly win. And yet Caleb and Joshua said, hey, they were right. This is, this is a difficult place, no question about it. But God is a God of the impossible. With God's help, we can do this. So uh, 40 years, he was second command again under, under Moses in the wilderness. And then in this situation, if you looked at just the chapter before this, Deuteronomy 34, you would find out that Moses is dead. Uh, Moses sees the promised land, but God does not let him enter because of, some of, it, because of specifically one indiscretion. So Israel mourns Moses' death, the person who's been leader all of these years. Moses had laid his hands, however, on Joshua. There had been a plan of succession. And we're told that Joshua had a spirit of wisdom. How about you? 
if you look at your life, and this may be not something that other people even know anything about, but are you in a transitional situation today? Maybe you've just moved here, <laughs> and you're beginning to put down roots, and you're still pining over what was the last place you lived. Or maybe, and I, this, is a, this is a thing that I've experienced and, and know about that I never thought about before, but maybe it's time for you, after you've been here for a while, to move back to where you were or closer to your family. And that's happening all the time. And that means leaving friends and people here. Maybe you've recently retired. <laughs> I kind of know what that's like. Uh, one of my friends said I, re I failed retirement, and I'm working on that. But, uh, uh, and then um, maybe you've had a difficult diagnosis. And so you're in transition. You don't know what's exactly going to happen next. Maybe you experience the, the death of a loved one or a friend. And that makes it very, very difficult. Whatever your transitional situation may be, listen to what comes next for Joshua. God makes promises to Joshua in his moment of transition. There's no question about it that it's God speaking here. Now, we don't know whether it's an audible voice, which it certainly could have been. God can work in any way God wants. Or whether it was uh, something that was very clear in his mind but not audible gives in specific instructions, however, so there's just no question about that. God gives Joshua three wonderful promises. First, he says that he will give him everywhere he sets his foot. Wow, what a statement. While he had seen the land uh, and spied on it with the other 11, uh, it was not going to be easy. It was going to be foreboding. He needed to go in and help the people claim the land. And then God will be able to, he says that God will help him to be able to stand against anyone, any foe, all the days of his life. And he says he will be victorious. Wow. If you're a person who's concerned about taking over and then going into the promised land, taking on the, the mantle of leadership, what a tremendous promise. And then, most meaningful of all, God says, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Wow. Dear friends, God speaks promises to us today. And even more than that, when you look through Scripture, Scripture is resplendent with God's promises which we can apply to our lives today. One of my favorite uh, books in the Bible, and that's where I believe God speaks to us primarily today through the Bible, and it's Philippians chapter 4, and there are three such promises there, very familiar ones. We are told that if we bring everything to God in prayer, that the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We're also told in this chapter, as Paul writes to the Philippian church, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Oh, I don't know about you, but I certainly need that strength at times. And then a little bit later, it's God will supply all your needs. Notice not wants, but all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, I, am, I will be with you always, even to the close of the age. And another place, I will never leave or forsake you. Tremendous promises. And just what's true for Joshua, we are called to claim and be reassured of these promises. Now, when someone makes a promise, you know, their promise is only as good as that person's word, right? And then many times, even though we might be well-intentioned, we aren't able to keep the promise that we made and that we feel badly about that. But uh, you can count on this, that when God makes a promise, you can be sure that it's going to happen. And I've, as I've mentioned before, I've been on this journey for 67 plus years, and I've looked at many of these promises in Scripture, and I can't say that I've ever experienced a time when I felt that God did not keep his promise. You can count on it. People will fail us, but God won't. The next thing we need to look at here is Joshua has given three conditions for these promises. Now, as is the case uh, often in Scripture, there are promises that are made, but then there are 
commitments that need to be made if you're going to realize these promises. And that's what's called a covenant, you know, a two-sided promise where two people are making a promise. We call it an agreement or a contract. In this case, uh, the conditions for Joshua are, again, threefold. One is that Joshua must study the law of Moses. Now, that's the only scripture he had that time, but the law of Moses, uh, both day and night, they must become a part of the very fiber of who he was in his life so that he would continually have them on his mind, be meditating on them, and so they would be on his lips so that when he spoke to people, whatever he did, God would, this would be vital for God leading him and caring for him. Condition number two, Joshua is to be careful not to just know what the Scripture says, but to do what, was call, what he's called to do there, to be obedient to follow God's handbook for life. Not enough to know, but must do. And then the third condition. Three times, as I mentioned, in verses six through nine, he's called to be strong and courageous. And then in verse 18, it, that, that's repeated again, and this time it's coming from the people. as <laughs> they saying to him, be strong and courageous. So it is with us, dear friends. If we're going through a transition experience, the fulfillment of God's promises to us are also based on our commitment. We must be into the scriptures so that they become a part of the very fiber of our lives. There are no shortcuts. We must be in the scriptures. We must be obedient to what we see there. And it's so easy to kind of rationalize it away in the world in which we're living. Let's take the, the centerpiece of, of the, the scripture that uh, that uh, Joshua had, which is the Ten Commandments. With the Ten Commandments, the first four of them give us what our relationship with God is to be, very strong. I believe that the fifth one is kind of a hinge commandment, and that's honor your father and mother, and I think that the basic unit that God works through is family. And then the last five deal with how we are to treat or act with our other people around us. And if we kept the Ten Commandments, our world would be so different. And Jesus sums them up, sums up the first four, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and the last six with, and your neighbor as yourself. Think of the difference that would be made in our world, our country, our community. And then the last thing is they are to be strong and courageous, but their strength would be in God and not in their own abilities. Well, Joshua's response to this word from God is really interesting. We didn't read it, but it's in 11 through 19, verses 11 through 19. Now, the thing that you must notice as being in a Presbyterian church, he doesn't establish a task force. He doesn't establish a committee or a commission to study what God has just said to see if what we should do. You know, or he doesn't say we're going to have a prolonged season of discernment to ponder what we should do. We're told in verse 10 immediately that Joshua orders the people to go over the Jordan River, and we're going to do it in three days, he says. And then he says, we're going to go in and possess the land that God has given us. He's a good leader. He gives specific instructions. The people then in verse 18, and I love this, give a heartwarming vote of confidence when they say, we, whatever you command, we will do. I bet he was a little bit shocked. You're, you're really going to follow me, huh? And whatever, and as with Moses, as we were with as we were with Moses, we will be with you. And then they say to him that fourth time, "Be strong and courageous." The rest is history. If you fast forward through the pages of Joshua, you find that God helps them to take the land that 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 and to claim the land that He's given them. They cross over the Jordan right on schedule. They possess most of the promised land, and without doubt, God was there giving them overwhelming victory. And at the end of the conquest, the way Joshua puts it, we're going to have a season of rest. <laughs> Sometimes we, after doing all kinds of things, we need that season of rest. And Joshua then calls the leaders together in verses 20, or chapter 23 and 24. As he calls them together, um, he says to them, now, it's up to you. I'm not going to be around much longer, but it's up to you. Either you serve the, the gods of the people on the other side of the river, or 
you serve the God who gave us the promised land. And then he says, in beautiful fashion, making his own faith statement, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Wow. And then in verse 24, uh, verse 20, 31 of chapter 24, this is what it says about Joshua, and I consider this to be Joshua's epitaph. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and all the elders who outlived him and who experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. What an epitaph. Wouldn't you like to have an epitaph like that? I sure would. Today, if you're in the midst of a personal transition, hear God say to you, I promise to supply your needs, to give you strength, to be with you, never to leave or forsake you. And again, when in the midst of change and transition, those are really important words. And when we're in the midst of a storm that we talked about last week, sometimes the storm doesn't go away. <laughs> and just when you're in the midst of transition, it doesn't mean all the challenges are going to go away. Sometimes transitions take a while. But it means that God will be with us, and God will keep his promises in the midst of it. And it means we have help in the presence of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of God through the Holy Spirit. And as I think of our church family, certainly we're in the midst of what I would call kind of toward the end of a transition. Much loved pastor Ron Pfeiffer left about five years ago. And it seemed to all of us, oh, this is premature, this is unexpected. Um, and we've been in a land, kind of what some people call a land between since then. And then COVID strikes. And uh, then I'm the third interim that you've had in just for a couple of months, gratefully for you. And then the PNC looks, for 130, looks at 137 different resumes. They work hard. And the land between can be difficult. And sometimes it can feel like it's barren. I remember the last Sunday that, and I've shared this before, where I was in San Antonio after being there for 19 months. A woman comes up to me at standing out in the kind of the vestibule, and she says, you know, this is the first Sunday I've been here during this interim period. I said, oh, really? And she says, yeah, they're just a waste of time. You've got to wait till the real person gets here. I said, oh, I see. And then she was quick to say, and maybe because she saw my, f my fallen countenance at that point, uh, she said, uh, but I wish I had been here, as if that helped. But, um, but then, um, and, and I remember, uh, too, um, that uh, uh, my response in great part to... Um, to transitions is that the, it, God is with us. It can be a great time. It can be a time if you hang in there and believe God's promises that you're going to be at the, f the, the beginning of a new chapter, new history, which is very, very special. On, March, on May 23rd, the PNC reported and the congregation gave a very positive vote for Llewellyn, Ellen, Llewellyn Hartley uh, to become the more, the pastor of this church. She, she will be in the office here after July 4th and will begin preaching, as I mentioned earlier, on July 11th. That's wonderful news as we move further into this transition. Now, some of you are saying, but she's a woman. <laughs> you know, and maybe it's the first time that some of you have had uh, a pastor or even a head pastor who's a woman. Two out of the three churches that I served as an installed pastor, we called a woman to be a pastor on our staff. And each time, great addition and very successful. I remember a grisly old elder in our church after she'd been there for about, the last church I served after been there for about, uh, oh, I guess probably a couple of years, he wasn't too happy with me at the time. And he said, you know, if we had a popularity contest here, you wouldn't win it, she would. And then I remember another time when uh, uh, my daughter was the, uh, the associate pastor at the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And as she walked down the aisle the very first time going into the worship service, a man said loud enough, a cranky old man, said, why do we have to have a woman? And my daughter, of course, heard her. But then within uh, a few, it wasn't long after that, that he became her greatest cheerleader. And he, she, he made her promise that when he died, that she would do his funeral. And she did. And one of the things that he did is he said, you know, you, you're a Yankee, 
And one of the things I want to teach you is to talk Southern. So at his funeral, she uh, mimicked that for a bit and, uh, and said, I'm, she, he taught me to talk Southern, and I'm so grateful for that. And everyone appreciated that because they knew that they had uh, developed a great relationship. When I think of my daughter, when I think of the women that have served with me, I believe they're every bit as called to ministry and every bit as gifted as certainly I am. And furthermore, and this would be something if any of you wanted to discuss this at any time, I'd be glad to do that. I believe as I read Jesus and Paul in the scriptures that they were very supportive and probably ahead of their time in supporting women and women in leadership. Like Joshua, I believe God would speak to us today. I think God would say to us, Craig and Jim and Ron and Dennis, they're not going to be here any longer. Well, hopefully they're going to be here, but not in a leadership role. And the time of being in that land between is almost over. But I have a promised land for you to possess. It's in your community. And I believe we're going to have opportunities like maybe we've never had in the history of this church. And I've called a leader, I believe God would say to us, Llewellyn Hartley, to be your leader. I'll go before you, and I will make you successful. I will be with you, I promise that. And your part is to be in the Word. Allow the Word to become of the very fiber of your being. But not only know it, but do it. Be obedient, and then be strong and courageous. How will we respond as we move into this new chapter, this new exciting chapter in the history of this church? Oh, dear friends, be strong and very courageous. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we are here today, we come to you with great thanksgiving as we think of the example of Joshua. We think of the way that you uh, spoke to him and we believe would speak to us today. Continue to speak to us in these days ahead. And I pray that you would bless this church in a way beyond their dreams in this next chapter of their history. I pray these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. I've been talking about what I believe. Why don't you stand with me and say what you believe through the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Won't be too long, I got a feeling, and we'll be doing what we have done through the, through the decades here, take up an offering. That's the way we do it as Presbyterians. We pass a plate. But because of COVID, we've not been able to do that. And so we're still in, in that season. I don't think it'll be too long, though. So if you would like to give an offering, uh, there's, there will be uh, plates, offering plates as you leave, or you can certainly uh, send it to the church or bring it into the church, too. And again, as I've said in the past, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the way you have uh, uh, given and, and kept uh, this church and, and God's work in, uh, in, in your minds and in, through your actions. If you would, please pray with me to give thanks for this offering that will be given. God, it's a faith statement to say that this offering is going to be given, but we believe it will based on past experience and based on what this congregation has done. And so we pray that you would take the gifts that are given you, the one who is the giver of all good gifts, and give us wisdom and courage to use them in a manner which would elevate you and elevate not just this church, certainly, but elevate your purpose in our world. And I pray that people might look at this church and, and certainly see, uh, hopefully, a great leader in Llewellyn and a wonderful group of people that love each other. But even more important than that, 
May they see you reflected. May you be visible through the way that we use these gifts. I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now will you please stand and, and join me as we sing together Amazing Grace. I would say again that, uh, it, that I will not be um, shaking hands with people today. Um, still got uh, 16 stitches here, and they're not quite uh, ready to come out. So, so, but I'll give you a fist bump or whatever you want. So, uh, but I look forward to greeting you afterwards. And also, if you have a desire for prayer, which is on our board right now, and you would like to uh, pray with someone, maybe it's something you're really grateful for and you want to give thanks with someone. Or maybe it's something you're really concerned about and feeling heavy about and, and you're in a time of transition and change or it could be all kinds of things. Please feel free to go to our, our prayer room, which is our, our room right over to, it's a, a parlor over here to my left, just outside the, the door here. Let us pray. And now may the love of God our Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship, the courage, the comfort of God's Spirit go with you all, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>